Uh, this is a volunteer red survey, so it's something we've been doing for, this will be the 14th year, monitoring spawning activity by brown trout in the Elbow River. So every fall, a part of the brown trout population from the Bow River comes up the Elbow River to spawn. Uh, they spawn in the fall and they leave their eggs in the river to incubate over, over the entire winter to hatch out next spring. Uh, the spawning uh, for a trout is very similar to a salmon and that they build a nest in the bottom of the river to put their eggs in. So the way it works is a female finds a spot she likes, typically in shallow, fast-moving water with gravel substrate, very clean, not a lot of silt. She digs this depression in the gravels. She lays her eggs in the gravels which get fertilized by the male. She moves upstream, digs another depression and uses those gravels to cover her eggs. So she's basically put them under protection for the next few months while they incubate and then the young will work their way out of the gravel next spring. These nests are called reds, that's spelled R-E-D-D, -D, which I believe is from the Gaelic meaning clean, and the reason for that is they clean off the substrate when they do this, and you can actually see where they've done it, and that's what we're gonna do today, we're gonna count these sites. But there's gonna be a depression in the gravels followed by a downstream mound, and that area is actually gonna be cleaner than the rest of the river. But this is what we're looking for and we're gonna be counting. So we'll work down the river, we'll spread out the breast going down the river so we're kind of all together in a line and we'll be looking for these reds. Uh, one of the things to do is as you see them, be careful in looking ahead of you and we walk around them, we don't ever walk on them. So we want to be careful that we're not actually standing on a red at any time. The complicated factor is sometimes in good sub substrate, a bunch of fish will spawn together and we'll see more than one red. And at times they're on top of one another so it's difficult to count them and the way we do it is we look for the minimum number of reds we can see. So if, for instance, we think there might be six, but we can clearly see four, we count it as four. We try not to overcount. And we use that same consistent method every year. One of the values of doing the survey every year is we get a lot of information on what happens all the time. Typically, people will do surveys like this every few years, maybe every five years or so. But doing almost every year, we get a really indication of the trends that are happening over time. And one of the key things we've seen is what's happened, the decline in reds that have occurred since the flood in 2013. But encouragingly, last year we saw an increase. As some of the gravels, what happened in the flood is some of the gravels were pushed out of the system, but some of them just got moved to the side. And as the higher flows come through in the spring, typical flows, not the big flood flows, they get those wet again and bring them back into the river. We're starting to see a bit of that and more gravel in the river since the flood. Uh, the, not as much as there was prior to the flood, but still things are improving a bit. So we're looking to see how things are recovering in the river. So when we're walking your best, all you guys have to do is count what you're, what you're seeing oh. and make sure the person beside you isn't also counting it. Oh, okay. So it's best to go sort of in little groups of two or three people. And then and when you get to the end of the little area that you've walked, you know, count how many you've seen and make sure that as a group you're just providing me with one number of what you've seen and we're not overlapping at all. Yeah. It's a lot of fun.